Hi, I'm John Twist of University Motors. Today we had a guy come in and ask about rear brakes on the front counter. So I thought, well, this is a perfect opportunity to show you the rear brakes on the later MGB, the one with the GT Salisbury or tubed type differential. Here's the brakes in their proper assembly um, configuration. Looking in the workshop manual is not much help. Uh, it doesn't have a good picture, and the picture that's in there, I swear, is wrong. So let's take a look at this guy and see how he works. When you press on the, on the uh, foot pedal and you get fluid coming back to the rear cylinder here, this cylinder pushes out in both directions. The shoes come out and hit the drum, which is traveling around here, of course, and stops the, stops the drum from turning. Now, the common things that happen back here to cause it not to work is, number one, uh, the cylinders freeze, but by taking a screwdriver and pushing this one way or the other, we can see that both pistons down here are able to move. The next thing that happens is that the cylinder itself leaks, so we can pull back the boot and take a look and see if there's any fluid coming out the bottom. There isn't here because it isn't hooked up, but on your own car, I, I can bet you that, that you'll have some fluid leaking. You can rebuild the cylinder, but it's folly. My suggestion is to change the cylinder altogether. So if we want to take this assembly apart, we have the anti-rattle springs. We hold the shoes tight against the backing plate so they don't shatter, they don't rattle. So you need a pair of pliers. Drop the, uh, whoops, here we go. No demonstration is complete without dropping something. So here's our anti-rattle springs coming out. Take a look at these. There's the anti-rattle springs. Those are off. Now you can see the shoes would rattle, or could rattle, if those weren't in place. The next thing we're going to take off is the handbrake spring. We use our big pair of pliers here. And off the handbrake spring comes, easy for me to say. Then we can get our, our shoes off all, all together. Here we go. Now the shoes come off. Here's our top spring and we can get our bottom spring off here. This is easier to do on the car than it is up here, but here the whole guy comes apart. Go. The only thing missing that I don't have on this demonstration is the boot, which goes in here. Now for the handbrake to free, this guy's got to be really nice and floppy. For the brakes to work, the pistons have to be free in here. For the brakes to be adjusted, the adjuster has to be able to be adjusted. We'll take a look at him in a minute. And let's take a look at our cylinder here. Uh, a lot of people say, oh my God, how do you get the cylinder off here? It's so hard. Well, first of all, you take the bleeder out. Remember, there's two different size bleeders. There's the 5 16 bleeder, which is the original size. Most of the replacement cylinders are metric, come through with a seven millimeter. Then we can pop our clip off. Boy, this looks really easy compared to the the job you're going to have. Pop the clip off, easy for me to say. Here it comes. Okay, the clip is off, and now this, the cylinder can come out from the back. The is going to focus in here. You see this pin on the side. The pin can be high or low or left or right, and that designates what the, di what the diameter is on the inside of the, of the piston. Some of them are, are very large on the inside. Some are uh, very small depending whether it's a midget 1500 or a 1275 midget or an MGB. So anyway, you have to have the correct cylinder to go with the, um, the correct backing plate. This, uh, this changes sometimes. Uh, if, you, if you put on a backing plate from a, a, a GT onto a Roadster, something like that. So now we get our clip on here. And I'm trying to hold this. Sometimes it's easier if you've got a two-person project, two, two people holding it, one, one from the front against the flange. But you can see I, I put that on. That was pretty easy. Uh, Bob Connell from Indianapolis showed me one time how you could use a uh, pair of snap ring pliers to open up the, the clip. He says he used that. I don't know what he uses now. I just saw him this past weekend at the summer party. I haven't seen him for a long time. Now, here, let's put our shoes back on. First of all, we put through our, our handbrake adjuster here, and then we put through our, our guy here, and we're gonna put we're gonna put this spring through our bottom hole. There's a slot and there's a hole. 
I'm going to put it through the hole, get this guy up, up here so that the spring gets caught on the underside. Then this hole, which is this hole here, we put at the top so the shoes are opposite. So we're going to hook him up here and oh, get this guy up in the place like that. There we go. Now we're going to put our spring up here at the top. We can put our spring like this or like that. We're going to put him like this so that the coil of the spring does not interfere uh, with the adjusters. So here, oh, here we go. He's in place there. Now we're going to put our handbrake spring on. For this we need our bird beak vice grips. All right, And we can put our spring in like this or like this. We're going to put him in the configuration that, that doesn't cause him to rub against the boots. Oops. When you get this guy a little tighter, you won't have this problem on your car because no matter how hard you pull, your car will not hop like that just did. So anyway, those this is the uh, third beak pliers that were in place there. And we can put our anti-rattle springs from the back on here and all we need to put these on is this pair of pliers here and these got these are little uh, little like nails with little fins on them here and I think I can get into here and get this thing on I think I can do this I did when I practiced this because I wanted to go through and make sure I didn't exceed our seven minutes on YouTube but I, I got to be coming up close to it right now we get our other anti-rattle spring on here, and then we'll show you how to adjust the uh, how to adjust the brakes, and we'll be done. So anyway, now we got our anti-rattle springs on. After, well, almost. After this, we have to uh, put our drum on, and the drum is is always held on with either two screws uh, for the disc wheel, or four bolts, or four nuts rather, with the uh, wire wheels not showing you today how, how to well I'm having a real trouble here in my time on YouTube is probably hopping away what happened to my spring Andrew all right so we found the spring actually Matt found the spring on the floor it took a bunch of us he found it on the tabletop actually maybe some of you saw it hop there all right so here we got them all back to, together now our handbrake works the uh, shoes move back and forth now we've got to deal with the adjustment to deal with the adjustment, we need a, 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 a four-point socket, quarter-inch four-point socket. And we, we take our adjuster and adjust them all the way back so that the uh, little conical pieces in here come all the way together. Andrew's going to try to focus in here, right in here, so you can see it. Now our handbrake is all, or our brakes are all the way off. And before we make our adjustment, you want to make sure that your handbrake is all the way off. Um, now we can go ahead and adjust the brakes by moving this guy quarter turn by quarter turn until the drum locks up and you can no longer turn the adjuster. Don't break him off, but get him nice and tight. Then, back him, back him off then, quarter turn by quarter turn until the drum just runs free. Now theoretically, the distance between fully locked and fully free is one quarter turn but in practice it's usually two or three. So if you leave it a little snug, expect them to, to get a little warm. Uh, and after you've put on new shoes and replacement drums or had your drums turned, expect that after a couple, uh, oh, I don't know, 100 miles, you're going to have to adjust them again because the brakes have now conformed to the radius of the, of the uh, drum and uh, you'll have to readjust. So these are the rear brakes. The cylinder, the shoes, the springs, the adjuster, I hope I've covered everything. I've gone awfully fast here. Anyway, these are lots of fun to do. I just had a guy in today talking about the front uh, hub bearings on the MGB and how, how helpful that was. We just put that up yesterday. So maybe some of you have called tomorrow about putting this up today. Give me an email. Tell me what you want to see. We'll put it up. Thanks a lot. See you later.